interviewing top talent in movies, television, sports, and music, leaders, entrepreneurs, and experts. Broadcasted out of New York, New York, Manchester, Los Angeles. As a mentor, life, and career coach, I help others, athletes, actors, and people of all walks of life solve the problems they face by introducing balance and routines that would otherwise leave them stuck and overthinking, paralyzed, unable to reach their goals. They look for engaging, rewarding lives, and I think they deserve that. Today, I invite you to join me on my radio show to learn from my guests and I how you can be more resilient and strong. I empower people who struggle with confusion or feel stuck in soulless, non-fulfilling situations. I help them find calm and claim their authentic self in their career path or personal life so they can live to their fullest potential. As a motivational speaker for businesses, schools, resorts, and communities, I speak on topics of achieving success and living a mentally healthy lifestyle, featuring topics from my Power My Life program within my revolutionary impact, influence, and income academy. I inspire the world as a radio journalist, author, life coach, career coach, resilience expert, mental health advocate, and most recently as a society writer for Transatlantic Today magazine. So happy that you joined me. Let's get rolling. You don't just have to go through it. You can grow through it. Good morning and thank you for joining Resilient You with Alicia Pisani. On our show each week, we have guests that talk about topics of resilience. We have guests from all walks of life. Uh, This week, I'm so excited. I have uh, a UK-based actor, Stephen Stallone Thomas. Um, Stephen, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. How are you this morning? It's, 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 it's in the afternoon here, but I'm guessing it's your morning, right? It is. It is. We're just, uh, you know, a little off time wise uh, across the pond. So thank you for, for joining. Now, this no show is, is broadcast in over 200 countries. So we'll have guests that listen in and um, I'm sure that they'll be amazed at all you've done so far. Stephen, do you want to tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So um, I am a um, UK based actor. So I'm from England. Um, I've um, been acting since primarily since 2015, um, since I finished drama school. Um, Mostly my background's in theatre. So I started off um, off West End. um, So a lot of shows um, around London. Um, And then obviously the pandemic hit in 2020, early 2020. So that then threw everything. And then I then moved more so into commercials um, through my agent. And then they eventually started booking me some roles in TV and um, in some other really big films. So um, as a SPAC actor, um, the latest being the Marvel film, which is out now, um, which we'll probably talk about at some point. Um, So yeah, that's my background. I'm also um, married as well. I've got a three-year-old who we had over lockdown. So me and my wife have been trying to like manage that because it's been obviously that adjustment from lockdown back to normal life and back to the working world. Um, So yeah, I think that's everything in a nutshell so far. Yeah. Wow. Well, you summed it up nicely. Um, (laughs) It just sounds too easy to me. It's you, you must have uh, more talent in your little finger than I have in my whole body, but but seriously, so starting out, you did you always know that you wanted to be an actor? Yeah, so it's it's something I've wanted to do. I mean, since I could remember from when I was very small. But my my parents are from the Caribbean. So my um my dad was from Jamaica. My mum was from Trinidad. So the 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 culture is very much academic based. So they're always like, oh, be a lawyer or be like an accountant or get into you know that side of things. So it's something that I kind of wanted to do. Um, and I parked it for the moment. Um, and then I did a degree which was part creative, part technical. And then I went down more of a kind of like um, technical route initially and then moved more into, weave my way into production. So I worked in production for like, um, I worked on X Factor, I worked for MTV um, as a production coordinator, worked as a producer. And then via MTV, I ended up 
doing some guest VJing, like guest hosting on MTV Digs, which was a daytime show there. And then I got an agent off the back of doing that. And then I went to drama school. So I went to drama school a bit later, actually, because um, my initial career moved more in the kind of production field. Um, but it's something I always want to do. It's just like, obviously, sometimes with family and like trying to please everyone, it's not always the easiest. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, I love that story about your career and how you, you, you managed that difference between your expectations, right? What your parents maybe wanted, what you thought was right, or what you, your, your desire. And now I feel like you're aligning with your purpose. So yeah. having done so many things involved around production and uh that's that's also nice to hear that probably gives you a lot of insight and in being able to understand what is desired as an actor am I right yeah 100 percent. I feel like especially being involved in parts of production or um and that, the casting process you understand that <laughs> ultimately like you know when you audition for a role the production team want you to get the job like when you're not in, when you're not behind the scenes you don't see how long it takes and you don't see like how many variables go into someone actually booking a role. So that's helped a lot um, because sometimes when you're an actor, it can feel like us and them because there's not really that dialogue be between you and production. But when you understand like all the processes, you can kind of understand that it's not always about you. Getting the job, it might just be like, you might audition and you put in an amazing audition, but you might not just fit that world that production are creating or the, the world that the the TV show are trying to the people behind the TV show are trying to create. So um, that helped a lot, actually. Yeah, definitely. Yes. And I, I've interviewed other actors and actresses where that's one of the main challenges. You know, you audition for something and then there's just this weight and you have no idea um, and right. you give up on it or worse, you give up on yourself. You yeah. know, so that, you know, that whole thing is just uh, amazing to hear that you've, you know, you have insight and that's helped you to to move forward. Now, let's talk a little bit about some of the challenge that you faced in terms of um, roles or getting a role. You, you've done some amazing work, I'll just say. Um, I'm so excited about the upcoming Marvels. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, I think one, one of our things that is interesting in this world and our world is getting smaller because of technology, right? We're able to connect with one another and we're thousands of miles apart. Um, so uh, for our listeners, you have one of the things that you had as a challenge when you worked on a U.S. Uh, pilot series. Yeah. Can you tell our listeners about that challenge that you faced? 100%. So I, um, so obviously as an actor, you get a number of auditions um, and it's a whole process and you might not hear back, but um, so, so I got sent through, um, through my um, agent, um, a casting for a TV series. It was a pilot and um, it was a whole process. It was, it was over a three month process where we were having back and forth calls Zoom auditions, they were trying to audition me for one character and then audition me for another character. Um, and then I ended up reading for one of the leads. Um, so this happened, I think it started off in like maybe August 2021 and moving into like December. Um, but yeah, it was a really intense process. I mean, I, um, as you know, I'm from I'm from the UK um, and the casting team were from the US or from California and they're producing this pilot. Um, and... Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, in a nutshell, I got very close to to booking the role. I got right down to the last two. I had to, I was called in for like a chemistry read, a Zoom um, chemistry read where by, and if you don't know what chemistry read is, it means they normally align you with your co-star um, and you have the um, director who will send you links and references and they were sending me links to, you know, Moonlight and um, Lakeith Stanfield and all these people to kind of say, look, this is kind of, this is the route we're going down. My agent was calling me going, look, Steve, we're very close now. <laughs> like, so obviously you get into the mode of, oh my gosh, it could actually be happening. Um, but um, yeah, so I had, a, I got round, down to the last stage of the chemistry read um, with the, with my co-star, which is basically where they pay you up and you get to have a bit of a chat and the director talks you through more of, more of a, uh, an idea about the show they're creating, about the themes and get you to read, obviously the parts alongside each other. Um, 
and it was something that I really wanted. Like it was a role that I, I, I really wanted to book. I mean, I don't even know. At, at the time, it was under a code name for this pilot. I don't even know if it's been made yet. Um, but um, yeah, I, I I was so close to booking it. And I, I usually when you get an audition, you find out on the Friday. So what usually happens is your agent will tell you on the Friday of the week if you've booked it or not. And if that day passes and it moves into the Monday, usually you haven't got it. And that Friday night, I heard I didn't hear anything. My agent was like... It, you know you've been getting really great feedback you know they've you know they've tried to have you read for someone else they've brought you in now for like one of the co one of the co-leads um but I didn't get it I, I found out on a Monday that they went with someone else um but my agent was still like oh look it's amazing you still got seen you know it's a really good opportunity um it's a really big casting team in the US like you just don't know where this is going to go um so that was I think for me that was a that was quite tough because I kind of in my head mentally was like, oh, this is it, you know? Um, Cause I don't often do that. I don't often do that. Usually I just kind of see every moment as it as it comes. But I think because I was sent so many references and my agent was so, you know, a hundred percent more so for me getting it. Um, that's probably like one of the toughest experiences because it's something that I really wanted and I was like, this this is fate, you know? Um, but yeah. Yeah, that 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 can be a challenge when you, you know, you work toward it, you get you try to manage your emotions, your feelings, and just not get ahead of things. But then, and I've been there too in different situations with job interviews or you know, other other things where you put all your eggs in one basket, as they say, and then you end up now. Let me dial you back a, a bit. So oh. for this role, the uh the role was uh Californian so yeah. you had to get rid of the accent maybe <laughs> mannerisms tell us a little bit about that as an actor having to totally change into another yeah. so most of the time if I um because I've got management team in the U.S. now which I signed with in January so I'm used to having U.S. auditions and casting so most of the time you can just you know throw in the accent and it works but this director is really full on at like which is amazing as an actor, it's what you want, but they were very much keen on dropping anything associated British with you. They're like, they love what you do. They love what you're bringing, but we, we don't want you to be you. Drop anything British, drop anything, mannerisms. Um, and that was really tough because it was almost like <laughs> forgetting me and becoming someone else entirely, which is what acting's about. But they were just really pushing me as an actor, which which I kind of, elements of it love, I loved, but obviously it's a bit scary as well. <laughs> Because I've never had it that intense before for, for a role. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, it, it's funny because initially when I was getting sent through all this information, it was really daunting. It was like, oh my God, I'm never going to be able to do it. But you do. It's really interesting how powerful the mind is and how much if you really push yourself that you can, you can do it. You know, as, as daunting as it might seem initially. Yeah. Well, that's true. That's true. We can do, you know, the, there's so many things that, I'm sure in acting and I'm not, I have stage fright, so I don't even know how I would do that. <laughs> Although I know actors and some of the things that they go through, you're more judgmental, more, more critical on yourself, yeah. I think. So, so after this, Stephen, after this, you found out on the Monday that you didn't get it. What was that like that moment and the, the moments thereafter? horrible I, I when I actually got the call I knew because obviously I know roughly how the how it works in terms of obviously getting the call on Friday if you book it and the call on Monday if you don't or an email um and it was horrible I, I, I for, for a split second maybe like ne maybe 10 minutes I was kind of thinking this is it now I'm gonna pack it in this is too much <laughs> it's a lot or it's too stressful um yeah it was a lot it was a, it was a role that I really wanted at the time and I kind of um yeah, I'd never put this much emphasis on one role before. And I kind of believed, I was like, this is mine. I love the dialogue. I love the script. I love the character. I was like, this character's so relatable. Um, and it took a lot to get over. I think for me, I I put quite a lot of emphasis on fitness as well. Um, and mental health is really important. Like for me, going for a swim or, go, or training or going for a run makes such a difference in my life. And I think it enables you to kind of come outside of your little bubble. And when you're out, you're like, oh, actually like you know within the universe this situation is very small but sometimes you've, you've become so tunnel vision to believing that this is a be all, be all and end all but actually in reality taking yourself out of that environment or going for a run or just you know you know finding nature or 
or going for a swim, for example, it can really take you out of that headspace. And I think for me, that really helped. And after that, I was like, right, okay, it's only one moment. There will be other occurrences. There will be other roles. Like, it's fine. Um, but I found that helped quite a lot for me anyway. Yeah, so that's true. And, you know, listeners, if you're involved in something, that's a great point that Stephen has, a great tip. Um, use what's there. You know, you may not have money, you may not have all the resources that you want, but you have the nature, you have the window outside, you can take this opportunity to start something different so that you can reflect and look different. You can look back differently on this. So that's, you know, what one tip that I'd like to share with everyone in terms of being resilient is to not be so close to it, right? And don't let it rule you. It's a temporary situation in most cases. And you can, you can, you know, see yourself in a better light when you do take that step. So when you, you, You've said that you've done some commercials, you've done yep. um, some other, you've done amazing work, you've portrayed characters that are uh, outside yourself, right? You've you've played a, a killer, you've played, a, a, tell us a little bit about some of the characters that you played. Yeah, pretty varied. Um, I mean, I I think probably going back to like theatre, a lot of West End stuff. Um, primarily, I played a lot of characters who are deep, deeply conflicted. So, <laughs> me as a person, for those who know me, I'm actually quite easygoing. I feel like I'm quite a chilled person. Um, but I worked with this with this um theatre based production company who, when I was casting, they actually decided to audition me for an ex like a completely different role which is for a really dark person, someone really sunken, that are going through like a lot of emotional trauma. And it's something that I don't often kind of move towards in terms of roles. I, I like to go for the light, fluffier roles because I feel like it's more it's nicer to play. Um, but yeah, so based on on that, the casting director ended up casting me in a number of shows, um, which were for the Carol, which are very um, deep and, um, you know, characters who are going through a lot of trauma and they might have lost someone in their life or, you know, might have just lost their job or have parents who are not very well and just very, very deep. And it quite it was quite hard for me to dig and go to that place, but I realised that I could do that. So that was um, something that the director could see me that I couldn't. And that was pretty amazing, to be honest. So I've, I've done quite a few emotional roles. Um, and then alongside that, yeah, I've played, I did play a killer on this um BBC show um, quite a while back, which again was quite full on. I played, I, I tend to get now booked as a, as a kind of like douchebag sort of um, jerk uh, a lot, which I'm not, by the way. <laughs> um, I just shot a horror um, called Jack and Jill in the UK, which is going to be on Amazon Prime, I think end of 2024. And um, in that I had to play a bit of a douchebag kind of boyfriend in that. Very against my type because I'm actually quite a nice person. <laughs> I, I think I am anyway, I hope I am um so that was quite interesting but yeah I, I tend to find um I tend to find you can always pull something from yourself to to to, to kind of relate to a character uh, it's it's interesting yeah the acting world's quite interesting yeah yeah so you so uh, I that's interesting to hear that you know meeting with you today I don't think I can envision it so I'm gonna have to check these out for sure now one of the things I saw you're like a supporting actor for like a rom-com too right is that uh tell me about that yeah so um yeah it's a um production that i shot oh gosh a few months ago actually uh, in the uk it's called just say yes it's a comedy um i'm playing um one of the best friends of the lead so it's a supporting lead role um it's about a group of people um who they're a group of friends who grew up together um and it's the kind of last sort of um foray the last sort of moment that they get to spend together um at this kind of um, I guess get guest house was actually a mansion as a massive house we went to and they get to spend this time together before kind of being like fully fledged adults and obviously leading their own lives um, and there's a, within the, the friendship circle there's a couple um, and one of them the guy is trying to propose to one of the one of the um, other people in the group but there's a lot of infidelity amongst that group which obviously gets out during this this kind of weekend that we spend away um, so it's quite funny. It's quite funny. There's a lot of comedy in there. I don't know how much I'm allowed to say, but um, that's that's out as far as I'm aware. Next um, next year, uh, 2024 February, it's out for Valentine's, and that's on Amazon Prime as well. It's a co-commission between Amazon Prime and ITN Studios. So, um, 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so that, those those type of shows are never old because it happens. And a lot of our listeners are at that midway point in their in their from their youth to to adulthood and and they're there right so this is just perfect and so good to see you in that the trailer is what i saw when i when oh I yeah my research <laughs> yeah it looks so fun so you've you've then you've done um what else a warrior tribesman yes i did i was a warrior so when i started out in film this is um, that was quite a while ago, actually. So I started out, that was probably 20, I think I shot that in 2015, 2016. So I played a warrior tribesman in um, Tarzan. So they remade the Tarzan movie with Alexander Skarsgård. He was the lead playing um, Tarzan at the time. Um, and I, yeah, I played one of the, the the warriors in that. So that was interesting. So it was my first kind of experience in film. Um, and um, it was very bizarre because a lot of time we were working up against like, obviously there was nothing there you see so we were working in the studio but we were using um we had to work with like green markers that were meant to be cgi um characters which they're going to throw in afterwards so a lot of char- i literally was wearing like a loincloth and it was freezing cl- cold i had no other clothes on i had like a sphere and um, a shield a lot of char- a lot of running um, it was very exhausting, but but amazing. Um, but yeah, very 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 cold. Um, and we were meant to be in in um, we were meant to it was meant to be set um in the tropics, so um in the jungle. But obviously, it was actually shot in London in a studios, Watford Studios, and it was freezing, and we had to start at like six a.m. and it was very cold, and so it was a lot. But it was fun. It was a great experience. It was a great experience. I just love this. I love hearing all of this because it's, you know, as a as a regular person, I'll call myself, I, you know, I watch the shows and I see what's going to per- pique the interest or what is the new thing and um, oh. different generations have different interests. And so what is your feeling on um, all, the new wave of, of things, right? Like, it's not just movie. It's not just cinema. It's the everything is online everything is available um has has and the writer's strike has this impacted you at all what what are your feelings yeah so um i mean to start off with the writer's strike i'm I'm, you know there's definite justification for it i think it was great that that happened i mean it was something that was bubbling under the surface and unless you're in that environment you wouldn't wouldn't necessarily know about it but the writer's strike was necessary because i i think one of the issues with streaming services um, obviously it's great for you guys the public you get to watch all your shows on like you know Amazon and Netflix and HBO and um, all of these platforms but because it happens so quickly that there's been no regulation over how much you know a writer gets paid for writing for streaming services how much an actor gets for being in a, in a show that gets gets distributed to a streaming service so that was reason for that and obviously there's a lot of conversation around AI as well when replacing actual actors with AI technology that's another conversation <laughs> we might need to come back to that come back to that another time um yeah but um, yeah that impacted me because a lot of the shows that we get that I film for in the UK are filtered through um bigger US productions um of course you get your UK shows which still take place and you're, we're still producing content here and producing movies but it definitely slowed down the industry um yeah. I like I said I just signed with a US management team in January and I was in LA in January as well and so um Obviously, after doing that, it went really quiet. So I was like, oh, gosh, they're going to drop me. Like, I've just signed with them. <laughs> Nothing's happening. Um, but but obviously having, like, Zoom calls and castings and auditions, and I, I did speak to them, and they said, obviously, it's, it's so quiet here. It's not you. Don't worry. Nothing's happening. The strike's happening. So, you know, you're, you're, you're fine. Um, in the end, I did end up booking a, a role in um, October, which I was in L.A. and shot, um, shot that. for I was in L.A. for four days early October. So things are starting to to get back on track, which is great. But um, yeah, the strikes were something that was we were affected by over here, and but the, but there's justification for it too. So everything in its own time, um, not ideal, but there's never an ideal time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's well, that's good to hear that you you see the things improving and you see that things are making their way back. Certainly, you're doing a lot of the right things. So. One of the things I think you have a very familiar face 
did you did you get that um growing up that people said oh you look familiar do i know you do do you get still yeah. get that oh. I get it. I get it a lot, and like it's funny because I I can't really see the comparisons. I get it on the train and stuff. People are like, oh, you know, and this these aren't my comparisons, but I'll get like Michael B. Jordan, and I'll get like people say, oh, like Denzel, a young Denzel Washington. I'm like, I don't see that at all. But I get a lot of these people, which is really interesting. But I guess in terms of casting, maybe it helps because I do tend to book roles, so maybe that association helps in a way. I don't know. It's interesting, yeah. but. I think it must. I think so. Because I know, you know, it's, it's something that if people have that familiarity, they, it's a subconscious thing. They, they become more comfortable and uh, it's more appealing, I think. So, yeah. well, so let's talk, let's talk about the big, uh, the big new thing that you have going on. Um, I saw you posted something about the Marvels, um, which is going to be uh, on Amazon Prime video. Um, you posted the uh, the makeup decision for one of your upcoming roles. Um, and there's beads and there's makeup and there's it's very ornate. So tell us about this role that you have with the Marvels. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you the backstory. So my, um, so I do a lot of SPAC work as well. SPAC is like stunt work, but just under that. So it's like special action. So a lot of actors, because they've got a skill, they might have a skill in a different area. So my background is in Muay Thai, like kickboxing, which I started in 2017. And because of that, I get put forward for like, um, I guess, um, more action based characters or action based like um, acting parts. Um, Anyway, so my my agency um, got in contact. This is back in oh god, maybe twenty twenty one, twenty twenty. Like we, a lot of these films are shot so far in advance. I think it was end of yeah, mid twenty twenty one. My agent got in contact and was like, oh, we've got this production. It's called Goat Rodeo. That was the code name at the time. Um, we couldn't talk about it. We didn't even know what it was for. Um, and they were like, you know, it's we want they want you to be one of the characters. You're going to be involved in one of the um, really big action sequences. Um, there's a whole phase of auditions and a whole phase of um, rehearsals. Got through the rehearsal stage. Sorry, got through the auditions phase. Um, found out that I got booked for it. So basically, I was playing um, one of the royals. That I, I don't know how much I'm allowed to say. As much as I can. I was basically I was playing one of the royals that attends. Um, one of the planets. So if you watch the Marvels, you understand what I mean by the planets. But um, and then on on this planet, there's a lot that happens. Um, and so anyway, so I got booked for that, which is amazing. Then I got COVID, believe it or not. So the the, the Wednesday, I think it's the Wednesday, the Wednesday before Wednesday or Thursday before filming on the Monday, um, my my wife was like, oh, I don't I I, I don't feel very well. My I can't taste. At a moment, and I was like, oh, "That's strange." And then she had a shower, and she's like, "I couldn't smell the shower gel." And I was like, "Oh, that's really strange." She's like, "Oh, I think I'm going to go and um, see if I can get a PCR test." And I was like, "Oh, okay." And then I went into the kitchen to try, and I ate a biscuit, and I couldn't taste anything. It's the first time I've ever had that before, and it was it's really such bizarre. A strange. So, yeah, it's such so a strange feeling, right? Ah, oh, so strange. And so, um, I think we had lateral f flow tests here. At, 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 at our house so I did a flow test and it came out positive just before filming and this is when like it was really um it wasn't as I guess relaxed as it is now um I was like oh gosh what am I gonna do like obviously I knew that I had to start um the rehearsals on the Monday I contacted my agent and they were just like we're really sorry like do the PCR let us know and if that's positive we're having another conversation. So I did the PCR, I came back positive and they were like, really, so we'll have to pull you from the production. We can't do anything about it. We'll have to replace you. So that was that. So it, that was for a bigger role that I initially had on, on the Marvel slash Goat Rodeo, the code name. So I was like, oh, great. Like my 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 first like big kind of Hollywood production, I've been pulled because I've got COVID. Again, another knock. Um, long story short, so COVID happened, didn't hear anything back. And then... Um, I think it was like 10 days later, because I think we had to give 10 days clearance at that point. I got a call from my agent and they were like, oh, so we've got another role. It's not it's not the role that you initially went for, but are you COVID free now? And I said, yeah, I am. And they were like, well, we could, we're, we're, we're thinking about bringing in because you've already auditioned for it. You've already gone through the process. 
Um, and it's not for obviously as long as many days as you, as before, and it's not as big a role, but we're still going to bring you in. It's so long story short, I ended up still being on the Marvels and as a spat actor, um, and that's when I yeah had all the makeup done and all of that stuff. But because we had to sign NDAs, like non disclosures, I couldn't talk about it. So um, I was only now able to speak about it because the film's being released. Um, so that's that. Yeah, so I'm in that as a spat actor. So I'm basically we had to choreograph some sequences, and I, yeah, yeah, you have to watch it. Um, but like I said, you probably won't recognise me because I'm, as you saw in the pictures, I'm very different to how I am now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, yeah. So how does that feel when you, you know, as an actor, whether you have to transform your, your being or you have to physically be transformed and then perform in that? How is that? How does that feel? It's It's kind of strange, but I feel like when you, because obviously we were in makeup for hours. So we were on set at like 3 a.m. in makeup for, I think maybe like two hours, maybe like an hour and a half, two hours a day. Once you've gone through that process, you are, you kind of like reinvent yourself as that person anyway. So it, it actually makes it easier. when Once you've got on all the, you know, the makeup and the beads and, you know, the head pieces and all of that stuff, it it, it actually makes it easier for you to become that character. It kind of make, makes you get into the body of that character. So I think it kind of helps, but it's strange because, yeah, getting back to yourself after being that character is, is a very strange process, yeah. Yeah, well, that's wonderful. Uh, uh, Stephen, I'm so glad you, you've come on the show today to share uh, your experience with us as an actor. And I I love hearing your story, despite all these challenges and setbacks. Um, you're resilient and, you know, not letting things hold you back. You're definitely going to be an inspiration to a lot of people. Um, yeah. So, so Stephen, is there is there anything else that you might want to share with our listeners, maybe young actors or people who want to aspire to do something different? Yeah, I, I feel like um, I personally just feel like just keep going. I, I think especially with the industry um, that we're in um, as creatives and in the film industry, you know, it's, it's, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. I feel like you just have to be in the game. Keep going. There will be setbacks. There will be, um, challenges but then it just makes you know when you do book these roles a lot more worthwhile and I feel like also saying like you know it's really important to stay active do things outside of your your role do things outside of casting and auditioning and that will also help you to take yourself out of that space and give you some like breathing space it's really important because I think as actors as well because our jobs you don't really have um, I guess a team around you per se it's easy to get like tunnel vision um, but I think just like taking yourself out of that space maybe going for a coffee or just doing something completely different outside of that zone of being an actor really helps um and I feel like you know as much as you can this is outside of acting I think try and try to live your life and try and live your dreams I know it's not always easy to say but I feel like it you know aligning with your um with your inner core feeling of what you should be doing um changes everything I think it makes a massive difference to your to your well-being and and how you feel as a person that sounds a bit deep doesn't it but <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> hopefully it doesn't sound too heavy <laughs> yeah no no I, I definitely know what it means in my own life I did that I kind of transformed and and now aligning with what I my passion is which is to give back and help others so yeah. this poster behind me, it's a book that I had put out for emotional strength explained, and it's a workbook for people to use to figure that out, kind of help them to, to get closer and overcome any challenges that they have. So um, I've done that. And then through this show, Resilient You, it's been a great platform to give people that like yourself that have that platform to speak and share things like that so what you just said about living your dreams and aligning with your inner core and how it improves the quality of your life and then in turn it it gives back and helps you to be a better performer or be better in that role um so thank you Stephen. that's that's definitely on point thank you thanks for having me <laughs>
Yeah, sure, sure. Well, we look forward to seeing the upcoming performances in, in 2024. Uh, wishing you all the best, uh, both in the U.S. and in U.K. If you get out to the East Coast, come and visit. We will get together for a coffee. Uh, we have a new studio being built, Netflix uh, Studios here. It's going to be the Hollywood of the East Coast. So, um, you know, who knows? We'll see you maybe on set over here, too. Be amazing. 2024. We'll see what happens. Hopefully you can catch up. Sounds good, Stephen. Thank you so much. It's been a blast and look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks. Well, have a great day. Take care. Speak to you soon. Thank you.